In the Tibetan tradition, there's a story about a monk named Milarepa. As a young man, he committed an act of revenge for something people, certain people had done to his family, and he actually killed 30 people. To free himself from this horrible crime, he turned to Buddhism and lived in a cave for many years. He meditated alone and had a teacher, but the teacher knew about his past and the deaths and was very harsh. Uh, his, his path was a very difficult one. So uh, this is a story about him, and of course it's a teaching as all these old Buddhist tales are. This one happens to be a teaching about, uh, guides us to freeing ourselves from our inner demons. So the story begins when the demons invade Milarepa's cave. His first reaction was to try to get rid of them. He chases them, yells at them, curses them, but the demons couldn't care less. Actually, the more he tries to get rid of them, the more comfortable they seem to be. So the story starts with rage, rage at these demons. Think about anger in your life and how angry you can get at people who annoy you or perhaps at the recurrent voice inside that puts you down, your own voice. We all have our demons. Awareness of them is the first step. And that's what Milaropa uh, achieved in this uh, beginning of the story. There were demons. He saw them or experienced them. They weren't, he wasn't blind to them. He was aware. Realizing that his effort to get rid of the demons didn't work, Milarepa decided to teach them. He thought, well, maybe I'll teach them the Dharma. Maybe then they'll go away. So he takes a seat and starts to talk. He talks about Shakyamuni Buddha. He talks about the Four Noble Truths. But the demons simply stare at him. They couldn't be less interested. And again, think of yourself trying to talk yourself into meditating, into developing a practice. You don't necessarily listen. Your demons don't necessarily respond. They're resistant. They aren't interested. But Milarepa is on a path and he's not giving up. So he looks into their eyes and says, what do you have to teach me? At that moment, all the demons disappear, except for one. But this one was particularly disgusting, annoying to look at, let alone to live with. Uh, so then Milarepa took an even more courageous step. He actually puts his head into the mouth of the demon and says, eat me if you wish. And miraculously, the demon bows and disappears. Milarepa surrendered. He realized then that he was his own demon. The demon was him. He understood at that moment that he was resistant to knowing, accepting his own thoughts, his own feelings, his own stories. Recall, the more we can accept that our stories exist and not fight them, the less we energize them. So this is a story about how on this path, 
we get to the point where we actually face life's sharp teeth and how we need to pay attention to our own unfinished, unresolved traumas and issues. How we need to expose them to ourselves. When we get to the point of recognizing that the troubles are us, not somebody else, not a spouse, a partner, not a child, not a parent, it's us that's causing the trouble. We get to the point where anger or fear or sadness isn't something we look at like it's a foreign object, it is us. Remember Pogo, the cartoon character who said, we have met the enemy and he is us. That's what meditation teaches us. And then it offer us, offers us another way to be. But like Milarepa, we need to let go of our resistance to embracing that way. And for this, we need the meditation practice. Sitting opens us to a mind without thoughts. First, it's just a very small gap. And then slowly, over time, you can meditate for quite a bit and recognize that there's just emptiness, none of your stories. And indeed, if a story arises, you know now not to clutch, not to get anxious. You know it's going to disappear. So to experience this not mind, you need to practice at least 30 minutes a day. You just need to establish something like that. And it's hard. Why? The answer lies in the mind itself. Its job is to make sense out of our very complex world. And we need the mind to do that work. We need to be able to manage this world. However, this effort keeps the mind busy just about, about all the time. Worse still, this mind of ours often gets addicted to this effort, never takes a vacation, never dreams of that, unless, of course, offered something to numb it out, like some alcohol. So if you say to, your, so if you say to yourself, I should meditate, the mind is likely to find many reasons why you can't. You could bypass the mind. Set a regular time when it's likely that the outside world won't get in your way. Then, to the best of your ability, ignore the mind's resistance and just sit. Surrender to the practice and you will free yourself of your demons. <laughs>